Hello everyone. Welcome back to another devlog for my Voxel engine. This devlog, I'll be showing off the new systems I've added to the engine, which really helped bring it to life. I know it's been over two months since my last devlog, and I'm sorry to have kept you waiting so long. There is a good reason for the delay at least. I recently started working a summer internship at ByteDance, which, if you don't know, is the parent company of TikTok. That's been taking up quite a lot of my time, so expect uploads to be a bit slower for the summer. But I am still managing to find time for voxels, so I did make some pretty significant progress the past two months, thankfully. Let's get into the changes. The first major addition to the engine was a more complete material system. Last devlog, there was a very basic material system in place already, but it was really just a color palette. My overall goal with this engine is to provide a very wide range of functionality, so naturally, more features were needed to allow even greater detail. In a traditional rasterization pipeline, one of the easiest ways to add more detail to an object is to give it a texture, which is just an image that gets mapped onto the object's surface. Some voxel games opt to give each voxel its own texture, like Minecraft, but this doesn't look too good for smaller voxels, like in my engine. Maintaining that 3D pixel art look is very important to me. I instead want to allow for textures that span across multiple voxels, while keeping each individual voxel a single color. This means my engine needs to make use of 3D textures, which are a bit more difficult to author, but 2D textures can't be easily projected onto a 3D volume. Technically, you could already mimic this functionality in the engine, just by giving each individual voxel a different material corresponding to the texture color at that point. But doing it like this is tedious on the end user as it requires a lot of palette entries to be made. It also makes the data structures I developed last devlog less effective, since they compress the voxels by grouping those with the same material. With the new system I developed, users can give each material a texture, and the texture is applied to the voxels during rendering. You can also specify different parameters, like how many voxels the texture spans before repeating and the filtering type. I also allowed the use of gradient textures, so the user can provide a one component 3D texture, which will be used as a lookup into a 1D texture containing a gradient of colors. The system is very easy to use. Each voxel in the volume simply needs to reference the material containing the texture, and all of the sampling and coloring is done automatically. 3D textures do take up a significant amount of memory, but the intent of this system is for textures to be repeated within and reused across volumes. For example, all of these spheres each sample the same 3D noise texture, just at different scales and with different gradients. This was a great start, but the material system was still pretty limited. What if the user wants to use a scrolling texture, or give the voxels a pulsating glow, or color them with some complicated math equation? I can't possibly support all possible use cases individually, so I decided to implement a procedural material system. This allows the user to simply specify the color of the voxel with a math formula, giving complete freedom. The implementation details for this are quite involved and pretty specific to the Vulcan ray tracing pipeline, so I'll skip over them for now. But the end result is that the user can now create any type of material they want. As an example, here's a scrolling rainbow material I made just with these few lines of code. To test out all these features, it was finally time to create a proper test scene. I wrote some quick noise-based terrain generation, sculpted some foliage and magic of voxel, and just like that, I had a quick and easy voxel forest. The terrain uses a Perlin noise texture with different color gradients for the grass and dirt. The trees use a tiny 2x2x2 two by two by two texture for a checkerboard pattern, and the flowers use that rainbow material from earlier. It was all looking pretty good. It was during this time that I also implemented soft shadows into the engine. These are calculated fully in real time, with no temporal amortization or denoising. This is the most technically interesting feature from the past two months, but I'm going to hold off talking about it until next devlog, as I plan to add a lot more lighting related features. Next devlog will be all about the lighting, and I'll hopefully go into all the technical details. For now, just enjoy the shade. One thing that bothered me with this scene, though, was how static it was. It felt like there should be some grass or leaves blowing around in the wind. 
I really like how the grass looks in my game, Teratoy, so I decided to implement a similar system into my new engine. Writing a system for just grass is a little silly though, so I began work on a system for rendering any type of particle, be it grass, leaves, dust, or anything else. I wanted this system to be able to handle any type of particle behavior and access any necessary type of data. So, similar to the procedural material system, I allowed the user to provide a function for calculating the particle's position and color, as well as any buffers for this function to access. The particles are rendered with a rasterization pipeline, as opposed to the rest of the engine, which thus far has been ray traced. The reason for this is that ray tracing millions of tiny objects is generally very slow, while instance rendering is incredibly fast. I did try different methods of ray tracing the particles first, but they all ended up being too slow for one reason or another. This means, unfortunately, that the particles will not be able to cast shadows, show up in reflections, or influence the lighting of the scene. But I think this is an acceptable trade-off for the performance gain from rasterization. Using the particle system to add some flowy grass, the forest scene is now complete, at least for now. I'm really happy with the way the engine is headed. Everything is super configurable and easy to implement with the API I've developed, and there are still tons of optimization potential both on the engine side and the user side. If you have any ideas or questions related to the engine, please let me know. I want to make it as easy as possible for users to make the games that they want.